before we get into pop culture, <laughs> no, actually, I want to get into um, Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. But um, real quick, what I don't like, what I don't like um, is. Um, let me just give me a second. Sex, sex, sex. Roland Martin, right? And you can see over here in the thumbnail, um, Freedom Caucus nominates Byron Donalds, a black man for speaker amid leadership drama, right? He always has something slick to say, it's, especially when it's a black person, black man or woman, but particularly a black man, when they are not a Democrat or when they go against or they don't align to his ideology, you know, and he always tried to, and this is what I don't like, you know, they always try to belittle, you know, other black people who are not aligned along the liberal ideologies or the Democrat ideologies, right? Um, I'm not going to play his video, but I have a problem with that. What What is your, I, what is your problem with Chip Roy and another um, Republican congressman nominating Byron Don Donalds because I think what he was trying to say is as if you know oh you know they're going to prop up a black man well why not because the Democrats you do it all the time you propped up Hakeem Jeffries you let Nancy Pelosi be head of um, House of Speaker for how many damn decades you know but the fact is that you pander the Democrats pander to black people the Republicans need to start pandering to black people. But at least when we're talking about ideologies, when we're talking about, you know, agendas, the Republican Party do fit black America better. So I've met him a couple of times. He's not unintelligent. No, he's very but intelligent. Here is the problem. I think from my encounters with him, he wants to be fearless black leader, but he just doesn't have what it takes to be one. So he down deep inside reacts negatively to anybody else black being cast in a position that he would like to occupy or be cast. Well, he's not a politician, he's a journalist, but I think, and, but no, also I, he will cast his opposition, especially if they are opposite yeah, of the Democrats. This is what's happened with journalism. You have people who occupy journalistic positions who are not really there to report accurately on what's going on. In other words, being a secretary to the events that occur in reality and record them for posterity. They are there because they're trying to use these positions to become the movers and shakers rather than the reporters. And that really isn't a good combination because too often that type cannot maintain their necessary objectivity and detachment. Mm -hmm. And they start using positions for advocacy, which breaks down and deteriorates and destroys their ability to do objective reporting, which is why we have the First Amendment as it is, so we can get objective reporting from somewhere. Because when they came up with these rules, they said, okay, we know how human nature is. We've been looking at it. We've been dealing with it for a long time. And there are always some charlatans who want to go off and crook it out. And then there are always these people over here that can't get their egos out of the way. But hopefully there will be enough folk who will be objective and the ordinary people can look at all of these competing views and say, that makes more sense than these other fringe positions over here. But now you get nothing centrist. Most of it is fringe and very little of it deals with objective reporting. It's too much into maintaining ratings. And you can blame CNN for that from 30 years ago when the mm -hmm. first Gulf War ran down and the company was going downhill back to where it almost became bankrupt before 1989. <laughs> 
he started putting these talking heads on to keep the ratings up for speculation and rampant, unfounded opinion and observations of this, that, and the other. And now here we are 30 years later when you get folk trying to be reporters and all they're doing is editorializing with no firm, objectively sought information on I which to subjective. editorialize. And right. he's one of the classic ones. And I don't think he likes anybody being a rival in his mind where it's like, okay, that's what I really want to do. Why doesn't somebody recognize me, et cetera, et cetera. And see, he's a coattail hanger. He hung on to Obama's coattail and he slid from nobody up until uh, into a position where people had heard of him. And then he got these media opportunities and he does what he does to push the blue position. And he's in grave danger of becoming a houseboy. Right. So I think he needs to back off and maintain a little bit more objectivity and not be so one-sided in the process. Right. Don't judge him, Joe Brown.